and welcome back to Home Build Help's Tip of the Week. This week we're going to talk about your pedostatic system. In particular, the components and parts you use to plumb that system and how to test it after you hook it up. You don't want any leaks. Starting with the basics, the backbone of both the pedo and static plumbing is the quarter inch polyethylene plastic tubing. This is pretty much the standard for running between the static and pitot ports all the way to the instruments. You might already be familiar with it from your hardware store. It's the same stuff they use for plumbing the ice maker to your refrigerator from a water source. So you can definitely go to the hardware store for this material. It ranges around 35 to 40 cents a foot. Now you can pay quite a bit more from other sources, but it's really this very same stuff. It has a pressure, working pressure of over 100 pounds per square inch, which is more than enough for what we're using it for. Also, you can use a nylon quarter inch tubing. Now that quarter inch is the outer diameter size. The nylon material takes a lot more pressure, is a little less flexible, and costs a bunch more. There's no need to go with the nylon unless you just happen to have it around. The polyethylene is more than adequate for our purposes. You can get this in other colors also. Why would you want that? You typically will be running your pedo and static lines together from many of the same locations on your aircraft back to your instruments and by the time you route these to your instruments you may forget or can't tell which was pedo and which was static and you don't want to reverse these. So what you may want to do is get some other colors. You could use up to three. One for pedo, one for static, and a third color for your angle of attack indicator if you have uh, such a thing on your aircraft. So it's nice to have at least two colors. Colors are available from sources like Amazon. Here's one here. and This came out to be about 25 cents a foot. And of course vendors like Steinair have some wonderful choices and will sell you the colored line by the foot. Now that we've selected our tubing, what parts do we need to hook the ends of the tubing up to make connections and joints and splices? Let's take a look. One of the most popular and reliable ways to make connections with the plastic tubing, either to instruments or to make splices, are the press to connect connectors of which I have a variety here. These are wonderfully simple to operate. They have a spring-loaded collar. This one is a union. It will join two pieces of plastic tubing together. Each end has a plastic collar. You simply press the plastic tubing into the end all the way and it grips it is done you are ready to go that is a permanent connection until you decide to take it apart in which case you simply grab the collar and pull back and the end will come out and this is the way all of these fittings work very reliable and the most important part about using these connectors is to make sure when you cut your tubing that you don't squeeze the end so that the end is nice and round. If you use a diagonal cutter for example that will squeeze and pinch and that's no good. So you want to use a tool made for cutting this tubing that won't pinch the end and turn that circle into an oval. These connectors will always work just beautifully with a nice round end. 
The reason we have a variety here is that we can adapt almost any situation with the proper connector. For example, the most popular way to attach your plastic tubing to an instrument is with one of these. Now most instruments have a 1 8 inch NPT fitting. That's the way they come. So in order to attach the tubing with a fitting like this, one end is the 1 8 inch male NPT and this will simply screw into the end of the instrument and then the other end has our push to connect connection. So this would be perfect if we wanted the plastic tube to come straight out the end of the instrument. There are many cases where we want to share a pitot or static line with multiple instruments. What we have for that is something like this. Note how this end will go into the instrument. It will screw in and then we can pass our either pitot or static line into one end and then we can run another tube out to another instrument or another destination. We noted that for splices at any time you can splice two ends of the plastic tubing together with one of these. It takes at least five or ten seconds to install one of these after cutting the tubing. We also can have sharp 90 degree turns in our tubing anytime we want to branch our pedo or static line into multiple avenues we have a T fitting and I really like this this is a bulkhead fitting for our pedo static line in other words can you imagine if you wanted to be able to remove a wing and to be able to disconnect the pitot and static lines you might attach this either to the body of the aircraft or to the uh, innermost wing rib whatever's most appropriate one line goes to your pitot port on the wing the other end goes to the aircraft and at any time you want to disconnect the wing you simply pull the plastic tubing out from either end as we showed by just pulling the collar back. There are other products used for connecting the plastic lines up to instruments. For example, these metal ones here require a wrench and a nut and have some parts and pieces involved. It's hard to beat the push to connect for simplicity and speed of connection. These were really made for high pressure lines but obviously they work just fine if you want to use them. Now next week we're going to look at a way to test our pitot and static system for leaks and do it very inexpensively with simple equipment because any leaks would mean that our altitudes and speed readings would be incorrect. So we want to test them. So until next week, everyone, everyone back to building.